October 26, 2024. Over a hundred aircraft slice through Middle Eastern skies. Their target? Iran's most protected military sites. Israeli F-35s penetrate the world's most dangerous airspace without a scratch. Zero losses. Perfect execution. Meanwhile, back in America, half of our F-35 fleet sits grounded on any given day. Same aircraft, wildly different results. The Pentagon noticed. What they discovered changed everything about how America will fight its next war. And the lessons? They're worth billions in saved research and countless American lives. Israel became the first nation to use the F-35 in actual combat back in 2018. Since then, they've flown over 15,000 operational hours in the world's hottest conflict zones. They've shot down cruise missiles, destroyed Iranian drones, bombed targets deep inside enemy territory, all while maintaining a 90% readiness rate. Our Air Force, just 51%. That gap isn't just embarrassing, it's dangerous, and it sent our top generals scrambling to figure out what Israel knows that we don't. Let's talk about what makes this story remarkable. The F-35 Lightning II represents the most expensive military program in American history. We've invested over $1.7 trillion into this aircraft. It's supposed to be the backbone of American air superiority for the next 50 years. Fifth generation stealth, advanced sensors, weapon systems that can see and strike before the enemy even knows we're there. But here's the uncomfortable truth. Since the F-35 entered service, it's faced constant criticism, maintenance nightmares, software glitches, parts shortages. Our own Government Accountability Office reported the program is more than a decade delayed and $183 billion over budget. Then Israel stepped in and everything changed. Type yes in the comments if you think combat experience matters more than test flights. When Hamas launched its attack on October 7, 2023, Israel's F-35 fleet went into overdrive. Within days, they were flying multiple sorties daily, high-tempo operations, real combat, real threats, and the world watched something unexpected happen. Lieutenant General Michael Schmidt, the man in charge of the entire F-35 program, stood before Congress in December 2023. His words were carefully chosen. Israeli users are achieving exceptional mission capability rates, the aircraft is proving resilient. We're learning a tremendous amount. That's Pentagon language for, we're shocked. Israel had 35 of their 39 F-35s flying and fighting in the middle of a war against sophisticated air defenses, while America struggled to keep half our fleet operational during peacetime. William Laplante, the Under Secretary of Defense, put it bluntly during that same hearing. The Israeli performance exceeds expectations in combat and exemplifies best practices. But what exactly did they do differently? Here's where things get interesting. Israel negotiated something unique when they bought their F-35s. They demanded the right to perform their own depot-level maintenance. They insisted on independence from the standard logistics system. And most importantly, they got permission to modify the aircraft with their own technology. The U.S. Air Force uses something called just-in-time logistics. It sounds efficient. Parts arrive exactly when needed. Cloud-based systems track everything. But in wartime, it becomes a nightmare. Our F-35s depend on this fragile supply chain that can break down under pressure. Israel said no thanks. They built underground maintenance facilities, hardened shelters, stockpiled spare parts. When war came, they didn't wait for parts to arrive. They already had everything they needed. The result? They could turn aircraft around faster than anyone thought possible. A plane lands from a mission, gets refueled, inspected, rearmed, and it's back in the air before our logistics computer even processes the request. General Schmidt told Congress he was impressed by the quickness with which they're turning airplanes. That's not just speed, that's survival. In a real war, the side that can keep more aircraft flying wins. Period. And there's something even more valuable happening here. Every single flight provides data, combat data, the kind you can't get from test ranges or training exercises. Israel shares most of this information with the United States. We're essentially getting free research worth billions of dollars. May 2018, Israeli Air Force Commander Major General Amikam Norkin makes a stunning announcement. 
Israel just became the first country in the world to use the F-35 in combat. The missions? Classified. But the message was clear. This wasn't just a test flight. These were real strikes against real targets in Syria. March 2021. Israeli F-35s intercept and destroy two Iranian drones. Another world first. The first operational shootdown by an F-35. Not in a training exercise. In actual combat. October 2023. A Houthi cruise missile screams toward Israel. An F-35 locks on, fires, direct hit. The first missile shootdown by an F-35 globally. These aren't publicity stunts. Each mission proved capabilities that engineers could only theorize about. But the big one came in 2024. Israeli engineers did something nobody else even attempted. They fitted external weapons on the F-35. Now, this sounds simple, but it's revolutionary. The F-35 was designed to carry weapons internally to maintain stealth. Internal bays mean limited payload. Israel said that's not good enough. They developed a way to carry heavy munitions externally when needed. More firepower, more flexibility, and they did it while maintaining the aircraft's core stealth capabilities when those external weapons aren't needed. Lockheed Martin, the company that builds the F-35, took notice. So did the Pentagon. These Israeli modifications are now being studied for the entire F-35 program. American aircraft will benefit from Israeli combat innovation. October 2024 and June 2025. These dates mark something extraordinary. Operation Days of Repentance and Operation Rising Lion. Israeli Air Forces flying primarily American-made F-35s, F-15s, and F-16s conducted deep penetration strikes into Iranian airspace. The distances involved are staggering, over 1,100 miles each way, through hostile airspace, past Turkish radar, over Jordan, across Iraq, and into Iran itself, all without being detected until weapons hit their targets. The June operation involved over 200 aircraft. They struck nuclear facilities, ballistic missile factories, air defense systems. The missions lasted 12 days, continuous operations. And here's the kicker, zero losses. Iran's air defenses included Russian S-300 systems. These are sophisticated, deadly, they're designed to shoot down exactly this kind of threat. Israeli F-35s destroyed four of them in the October strike. The remaining systems couldn't track the stealth aircraft effectively enough to engage. The U.S. Air Force watched every second. Our intelligence agencies analyzed every detail. Because we're planning for a potential conflict with China in the Pacific. Same problem. Vast distances, sophisticated air defenses, limited tanker support. Israel just showed us it's possible. Here's something most people don't know about the F-35. Before every combat flight, pilots load something called a mission data file. Think of it as the aircraft's combat memory. It contains threat libraries, enemy radar signatures, electronic warfare profiles, everything that JET needs to recognize and defeat what it might encounter. Updating these files used to take months. Different countries, different threats, different bureaucratic processes, when Hamas attacked, Israel needed updated threat data immediately. New weapon systems, new targets, new electronic signatures. General Schmidt's team did something unprecedented. They turned around a complete mission data file update in a week, maybe 10 days. LaPlante called it remarkable. The lessons learned on how you did that can apply all the way around the world. Why does this matter? Because in a real war, the enemy adapts. New tactics, new equipment, new countermeasures. If it takes months to update your aircraft's threat library, you're fighting with outdated information. Israel proved we can do it in days. That capability could save lives in any future conflict. The Pentagon isn't just collecting interesting stories here. They're fundamentally rethinking how we'll fight. Three major lessons stand out. First, stockpiling matters. Israel's independence from just-in-time logistics kept their fleet flying when it mattered most. The Air Force is now running wargame scenarios focused on contested logistics. How do we keep F-35s operational when supply chains break down? The answer involves pre-positioning parts, building redundancy, planning for worst-case scenarios. Second, combat experience is irreplaceable. Israel has flown combat missions in Syria, Lebanon, 
Gaza, Iran, and Yemen, they faced real threats, made real-time decisions, adapted tactics on the fly. Every lesson learned improves the entire F-35 program. American pilots train against simulated threats. Israeli pilots train against real ones. Then they share what they learned with us. Third, modification flexibility wins wars. Israel's ability to rapidly integrate new weapons, sensors, and electronic warfare systems gives them an edge. They don't wait for program-wide upgrades. They identify needs and fill them quickly. The U.S. military is traditionally slower, more bureaucratic, more risk-averse. Israel's success is pushing our military to be more agile. There's something else happening here that deserves recognition. This relationship between the United States and Israel goes far beyond aircraft sales. We're talking about a force multiplier for American military capability. Israel operates in one of the world's most dangerous neighborhoods. They face threats we only game out in simulations. Iranian drones, Russian air defenses, sophisticated electronic warfare, ballistic missiles, every single day. And they win. Consistently. That combat experience feeds back into American systems. The lightning targeting pod? Israeli technology. Now standard on U.S. fighters. The tactics for defeating massed drone attacks? Developed by Israel defending against Iranian and Houthi swarms. Being studied by the U.S. Air Force for Pacific operations. Iron beam laser defense? Israeli innovation that's revolutionizing how we think about air defense. When people ask about military aid to Israel, they're missing the bigger picture. We're not just supporting an ally, we're investing in research and development that would cost us hundreds of billions to replicate. We're gaining battlefield intelligence that's literally priceless. We're improving our own military capabilities through their combat experience. Israel's F-35 operations prove something vital. Paper specifications don't win wars. Combat experience does. Maintenance readiness does. Tactical flexibility does. And the United States military is learning those lessons in real time. As we look toward future challenges, whether it's China in the Pacific or Russia in Europe, the F-35 will be central to American air power. Thanks to Israel's combat operations, we know it works, we know how to maintain it under pressure, we know how to adapt it for different threats, and we know what modifications make it even more deadly. That's not just valuable, that's essential. Our pilots will fly safer, our tactics will be sharper, our technology will be proven. All because one ally took the aircraft into the most dangerous skies on Earth and showed us what's possible. The next time you hear criticism of the F-35 program, remember this story. Remember Israeli pilots flying deep into Iranian airspace. Remember 90% readiness rates during wartime. Remember zero combat losses against sophisticated threats. That's the real measure of success. If this story opened your eyes to something you didn't know before, hit that like button. Subscribe for more insights into military technology and strategy. Because understanding how we defend freedom that never goes out of style. Stay safe out there.